Hello everybody, welcome again to another episode. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> that was not necessary at that point in time. Wow. Not helpful. Timing. Um, yeah, timing. Uh, hello everybody, welcome. I'll just clip that bit. Um, welcome to episode number 44. He says an entirely uncertain way, but potentially, um, it's going to confuse everybody if I'm wrong. Uh, it really will throw because I'm going to be wrong consistently for several weeks and be two episodes behind or something ridiculous. Um, so we are, um, we've just dealt with a little bit of what I would classify as a revenge mission uh, for this for this lot. Um, We've just had a, a, a return fight with the ghost in the library and they've found a few items of interest and a few bits and pieces here and there. For the purposes of uh, this episode though, welcome to 2023, um, because this will be the first episode we release in 2023. Um, hope everybody is, you know, fully recovered from whatever hangovers you've given yourself. Um, that you have managed to finish the uh, collection of booze that your friends brought over to your house and then forgot to take away with them. Uh, <laughs> or various other states of being uh, that you are currently in right now, uh, that they are, I hope, all good and well, rather than um, some sort of amorphous blob wishing that existence would end. Um... <laughs> Uh, so, in either case, uh, yep, we are back. We are back uh, with another episode of our Abomination Vaults actual play. Um, we are currently, currently, say, still down on the third floor, what they ha have colloquially kind of come to know as being the library. Um, and uh, we are coming to the end of our time, really, in the library. There are, there are only a few little sort of odds and sods to kind of pick up on and to kind of do um i think i'm going to leave it to the players or more accurately probably the characters to decide where they're headed next uh in a kind of uh brief run but um yeah um i mean you're all level four you're all kind of a little bit bigger and better than you were before there's a whole lot more to go and you know that the only real option is going to be to carry on going down soon uh but i shall leave that for you guys to discuss i think i'm just gonna swing us really quickly into this i'm not gonna really faff around too much with anything else um we shall uh, we shall get a little bit of the old music going we shall swing over to our map there we are. Uh, there they all are in the uh, in this scriptorium, um, having just found the, the private chambers of the heads uh, the, of this ghost, um, the administrator, uh, and her private chambers, and a demonic contract uh, for the prison guard that they found earlier. We conclude then. Hmm that she made the contract and hired him, or bound him, or whatever she did to him? Um, not necessarily her, but certainly that the formal contract was being stored here, or had been written up here. Um, that's, I think, probably what you can ease, you can definitely discern. Did we find anything else in the drawers, or was that it? Um, that was it, uh, other than two bulk of valuable books. Which I have acquired, or added to my inventory. <laughs> yeah. Death cult or stairs, then? There is still some space further south as well, um, but that's beyond the zapping room. We could go... It could, was... Jailer Demon on this level or one up? He's on this, Ooh, level. this level. He is indeed. All the way west, if I remember rightly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we could have a have a have a bit of a breather and go and wave his contract under his nose. Mm -hmm. Just have somebody be happy to see it, wouldn't it? See what we'll do that without the map, so you don't have to move anything. Uh 
So you head through the chambers and you head over to the west where the, the jail was. The door firmly shut uh, once again after he closed it on you. Um, and uh, yeah, he. Uh, what are you going to do? Because you can, you can see not a lot, right lot really. The door is currently closed. Knock on the door. What? Okay. What you want? Contracts, you like you asked. You're kidding. You guys have found it. What's it worth? Oh, well, nothing other than your heads on your shoulders. <laughs> you remember? Yeah, I, it's not like I forget anything really from around here. Well, come on then, Hello? if you want. To get rid of me and have a look around, you're more than welcome to just... Well, I'm assuming... Actually, hang on. Before I go any further, have any of you lot read it? Uh-huh. Uh... Yep. Does it look like I can get out of it? Yep. Yep. Gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gimme, 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 gimme. As we were reading it, were there, were there any ways or causes that he could be allowed to stay? You don't think so. It's more loopholes to get out of it rather than loopholes to just cause some oh. havoc. Okay. And Effie just hands it over. Like, she oh. has no care. <laughs> hang on. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, hang on. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Well, what tends to happen is you get summoned and there's a whole lot of sort of to and fro, standard contract, blah, 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 and then uh, clauses are put in and I just kind of said yes. And, yeah, I should have read it. I really should have. Always read the fine print. That's what I've learned from this, especially now, after all of this lot. Definitely read the fine print. Um, Alright, uh, I hope I don't see any of you lot again. I especially, and he points at Moz, really don't want to see you again, if that's alright with you. Um, don't use my name when you're doing your thing, yeah? Just... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's your grade or if it's a different grade that uh, will be called up. But quite often, quite often, my, yeah. So, you know, don't, just just forget who I am, all right? Just just forget who I am. I prefer not to have to go through that again. Um, as a part of forgetting who you are, as a part of forgetting who you are, is there anything I should be aware of that... Your brother and your kin, your colleagues might try and use against someone like me. Well, uh, t honestly, no, because your orders. Look, I, I, every now and again over the past few hundred years, while I can't, you know, leave, I get the odd message backwards and forwards just so I'm clued in. All right, and I've found out about you lot, you weirdos, and um, I don't know much about the the stuff that goes on. I just know that generally speaking one of our lot gets summoned and then comes back feeling a little worse for wares or less hungry dependent on the way it's gone um so i don't mind the not being hungry thing but i do mind the coming back feeling like i've been cut into several pieces small pieces so just you know if you don't mind okay anyway and with that, there's a sort of screeching noise as the air begins around him begins to break. Um, a red glow appears around him. And then with an almighty woof of sulfur, he disappears. What a nice chap. Yep. Possibly go wrong from this. That's all right, man. It was definitely going to have a conversation another time. Okay, 
uh, there is another chamber in there. Um, again, I'm going to avoid using the maps because we don't particularly need it. But um, what you do notice is it's, it's a jail cell. Uh, it's got the standard sort of jail cell door, wooden door, bars. Um, and inside, uh, an overturned chamber pot lies next to a rectangular patch of fungus that might have once been a mattress in the corner of this room. A skeleton is just visible within the fungus. You investigate. Um, in what way are you investigating? Um, physically looking it over, but also doing detecting magic and all that kind of jazz. Okay. So there's no sign of magic whatsoever. Um, the there's no real notes of who this skeleton belonged to. Um, just quite large mushrooms working their way around him through him through it over it okay I touch it. I the mushrooms? Take a look at it. can i do some <laughs> recall knowledge about these mushrooms please uh yeah i'll do a bit of recall knowledge i did hear what nephi said by the way um so these mushrooms are relatively common mushroom um they're a relatively common fungus um they are not poisonous they are generally edible um and nephi as you pick and taste one before anybody can really stop you um they actually taste rather nice would they taste better in a pie can i make pies with them <laughs> Um, I'm sure you could make um, corpse mushroom pies out of them, yes. Yay! Corpse mushroom pie! <laughs> the Imperium thanks you for your new menu item. I'm going to patent it. No one else can sell corpse mushroom pie. <laughs> I collect as many mushrooms as I possibly can. Fair enough. There is no item for this. There, you you just have some mushrooms. <laughs> Please tell me she's now high as a kite. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> they are just tasty, tasty mushrooms. Uh, okay, uh, you have realistically only got two things left uh, available to you. Uh, heading on beyond the um, room full of ghostly spectral light, or there's the temple. I was tacked for Ooky Spooky Temple. How are you feeling, Fader? Um, I got maybe three heels left in me. But, uh, you know, I, I, I can. We, we probably had enough time so I can, I can first aid on the fly as well. In bar, how are you? Oh. Like, I know you did a lot of disrupting to that particular ghost. I, uh, yeah, that was the stuff I could literally do all day. Uh, the only thing that really cost me anything irrecoverable was the ghost, it was the, yeah, um, the thing on your weapon. Yeah. So, medium risk then going into the temple? Please, you know, leave if it feels a bit much. We can still try. Well, yeah. Let's plan an escape route. That's a possibility. Am I, is Moz, am I still slowed? Yeah. Uh, no, you will not be at this point. So uh, we will take that off of you and anybody else that's got it can also uh, potentially remove it from themselves if they haven't already. Which I think they had, so that's all right. <laughs> hmm. 
Oh. We left relatively early morning. Mm -hmm. got, got down here morning ish. Yeah. We were what, pushing 10 ish, 11 ish? With the running backwards and forwards, with the moving about here, probably quite sneakily and stealthily, just in case anything else is about. Um, with searching the rooms as well, you're actually probably past midday um, quite happily at this point. You know, being the, being the superstitious sort, vaguely that I am, I think it's probably going to be a bad idea to go into the temp the temple of an otherworldly god of death at night. Mm hmm Either we give it a shoe in now or we hold off till tomorrow. I mean I know we're underground, so there's no huge difference to moonlight or otherwise, but think, we could go and explore elsewhere and then come back to this first thing tomorrow when we're feeling a bit better. All right. So we've got vaguely weird teleporty energy room. Or we can have a look at another level. But I don't particularly feel like leaving this thing behind us. I wouldn't want to go down a level until we've cleared this. Yeah. I think we should approach this from with with just closing the door and running away being an option. Mm-hmm. No heroics, but if we fit, if we feel like we can have a go, we'll have a go. I mean, it could be it could be empty. Sure. So we're not we're not going to know until we open that door. Yeah, and we know where to run and where not to run. Now, so it's not like we're going to run smack bang into another threat. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, quick votes then. Explore elsewhere, come back, or pop the door, have a look, close the door. That one. That one. Pop, pop. Okay. Okay. Pack it up. And if possible, I'll take that weapon blessing again. It might not just be ghosts this time. Because it was skeletons, wispy things that live in skeletons and animate them last time. Okay. Can I attempt to recall knowledge check on those wispy things? Bearing in mind we've encountered them before in this kind of environment. Um, wispy ones, two floors up. The the corpse, the corpse lights. Yeah, yeah, so you did know quite a lot about them. Uh, they are creatures called corpse lights. They are fundamentally they are willow wisps that have um, almost starved through a lack of uh, fear and other emotions to feed on. Um, and uh, yeah, they are. Um, they can just about manage to inhabit a recently dead body uh, and use it as a vessel to try and effectively get some food out of or, or other things yeah so they, they use it as a protective shell but actually the individual corpse lights when they haven't got anything to hide in are quite weak no particular resistance to normal weaponry no nothing really specific i don't believe um, it, it has been a while since uh, since we've had to deal with co with the corpse lights. Um, just see if I can find out for you. Okay, so they they do have a uh, then they're, they're not resistant. They don't have resistances, but they they as with many ghostly undead creatures, they can't be diseased. They can't be paralysed. They can't be poisoned. You know the the sorts of things like that that you'd expect. Okay. Okay, Inver is currently still down at the bottom of the screen. There we go. 
Okay, and we'll uh, we'll get everybody back onto the game screen. Okay, so you stand at these two double doors, uh, this visage of um, a strange feminine shape rising from the ghost-laced mists of a cemetery of emptied graves. Nephew, did you say you've heard something like a couple of days ago when we were down here last time? Or do I always remember that? Um, Nephew would remember, but Becky, as a fizz rap, does not remember because it was quite some time ago. Uh, you didn't hear anything coming from the other side of these doors. Let's have a listen just to be sure. Uh, yeah. And the magic woo. Kind of the magic sense. woo. Yeah. Okay. I should probably be up there doing the same. Um. <laughs> so you do not hear anything coming from the other side of this door. There is no magic that you can discern. Um. And no spiritual energies of which you can discern. Be a really thick door. Sorry, I missed that. I so said it could just be a very thick door. It could be. It is a large stone door. Alright. Invar, do you want to touch me? Anyway, um, do you want to bless. <laughs> now, now! <laughs> Would you like. To cast your man, no. Uh, anyway, <laughs> door. Okay. So, you can see quite a lot from here. Quite a few people can see a lot from here. Um, soft light illuminates several display cases in this vast room. Once used to display books, the cases stand smashed and empty. Along the curved northern wall stands a hideous, towering figure of a woman. The form is composed of hundreds of portions of stitched together flesh from a variety of different creatures and draped in tattered, filthy sheets. The stench of rot from the statue fills even this large room. And stood in front of the statue, slowly sort of stitching bit, extra bits into it is a grotesque looking yeah. woman is a is, is um it's a strong term to use but it certainly has a feminine shape at least to start with um this almost priestly looking individual stands at the statue and as you open up the doors sort of hissing you know, it's kind of a hissed voice. Hey. I was waiting for you. You may have destroyed most of my cultists. But I will kill you. And the cult of Kanka will rise again. Oh, we oh, shall God. rise. Nimbleoth. Guide my hand. And she turns and begins to cast a spell. And we shall roll for initiative. Okay, so we are going to do the initiatives now. Uh, so I'm going to start with Moz. Um, that's a 9 on the dice for 19 total. 19 total, okay. Uh, we'll go to Nephi. Uh, natural 20, so that gives me 30 overall. Na, 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 na. Uh, <laughs> Phelan! Natural 20 for 33. No, I see, I see. I see. In Inva! I have no idea, but it ended up as 20 overall. 20 overall. 20 is fine. That'll do. That'll do nicely. Okay, uh, let's do a little bit of a swap on the old music again. We'll get rid of that one and we'll start this one because it's slightly special. <laughs> oh. Okay, 
Let's have a little start on this then. Balin, you are first. Okay. So, Balin, he no see thing from here. No. So, one, two, And then we shall be bowling flaming spheres. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. Uh, so uh, a ball of fire erupts in front of you and begins to roll forwards. Uh, would you mind explaining what I need to do? Okay. So this this the sphere. It basically just comes up beneath this priest thing of nimble off. Mm-hmm. And will deal 3d6 fire damage they can attempt a basic reflex save passes okay. are zero damage rather than half oh okay uh so i am going to end up with a total of 20 on my save which you just bang on ah <laughs> so she just steps slightly out of the way uh and yeah. uh yeah but it's, it's it's fine that that's Gonna be hanging around for about a minute. Well, there is that. There is that. Um, Neffy, it's. Um, oh, hang on. Yep, yep, yep. Because, because Olin. Because Olin. Yeah. Being a big boy now. Yeah, he can indeed. Uh, uh, he, he can use a, a, a an action to follow me. Yeah. Indeed, he can. Indeed, he can. Right, Neffy. Now it is your turn. Okay. Uh. From here, I can see it. So I'm, I'm just going to shoot at it at this point because it hasn't gone yet. So I get my sneak. Uh, you do because you use stealth to uh, to to do your thing. Yeah, that is that is 100% true. So that is. Twenty-four. Twenty-four is a hit. It is a d6, I believe, at your level. I will eventually learn the rules. No. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, ten damage. Ten points of damage. Okay, starting it off relatively strong. Uh, okay, so you have take, taken a shot. So I've got to reload. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, reload and then shoot again. Okay, dokie. Make that attack roll. I'm right, I don't get my sneak this time. No, you will. 100%. No. Okay. Because uh, unless I'm imagining things, I believe the um, sneak attack. Surpri sorry, the pri yeah. surprise attack. Um, on the first round of combat, if you roll deception or stealth for, uh, initiative, that creatures that haven't acted are flat footed to you. If they are flat footed to you, you get sneak attack. 21. 21 is exactly what you need for a uh, to hit. Okay. Oh, same again. 10. <laughs> 10 more points of damage. I mean, that's that's pretty good going um, for your first uh, attacks on it. The Make down for the last fight. The downside is it is it her go now. So I think the first thing I am going to do hmm, I've got a range of 120 feet. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like what you just did there, Neffy. You've shot me twice, and I really don't like it. So I'm going to cast a spell against you. Um, I will be making a ranged attack against you. Twelve on the dice, plus fourteen, say twenty-six. Mm -hmm. 
Um, now, you're quite a fan of this spell in um, in the other game that we play, um, but you have it as something called Searing Light. Well, oh, this is called oh, yeah. Chilling Darkness and is the evil version of it. Don't suppose you're a celestial, are you? Uh, no. Oh, well, that's good, because if you were, it would that do would the do extra more. damage. Uh, but I will still do 5d6 worth of damage to you. Uh, so that's 9, 10, 12 to start with on the first four dice, and another six. Um, so we'll have uh, 18, was that in total? Uh, 18 points of damage. Oh. Oh. Should oh. expend that spell. Uh, and then, does that have range? No, that's touch. That's touch. So, uh, we'll cast shield on ourselves. Why not? Uh, as my second action. We'll, we'll have a, a shield on me. That seems like a good idea. Uh, Inver, it is your turn. Good. Me. Well, I mean, I'm going to have to get through the door in order to see what's going on. Yep. Yep. Uh, there are two doors and currently only one half of it is open, so uh, you could use an action to open the other half of the door. <laughs> okay, now I can see roughly what's going on. I am going to have to take this step. Fine. I really like being right in the line of fire, but so she is ghostly. So all the stuff that applies to the last one roughly applies to her. She is not ghostly. She is ah. not ghostly. Oh no, you did go for this. Uh, okay. Cast that. Yep, and nobody is near her. Right, sound burst. Mhm. Mm uh, so this is a basic fortitude save, please, on DC 19. Basic fortitude save on DC 19. I have a 19 on the dice uh, and a plus 15 to my fortitude. So uh, I'll take my 34, please. Okay, so I believe that's still half damage. Uh, if it's a critical success, no. Okay. If it for a basic save, that would make it no damage whatsoever oh. if I critically succeed. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe that's your three actions. Right, well that was... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Moz! Hey. To round off our turn. You believe they are not going to come over here and make my life easy. <laughs> <laughs> what gives you that idea? <laughs> the fact that he's saying, Oh, that rang. It's my first inclination to leave this in the pack. Uh, <laughs> dark people see the light of giving gold that shuffled itself past my pretty shoulder. <laughs> you are cutting. They are cutting... entirely within charging range. Yes, they are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am <a> angry <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very angry dog. Like, on this chart, it's a problem. In the... I'm going to set the mirror back that one. Okay. That's the mirror of the first <laughs> That's a 16 plus 15. You're cutting... Plus you're cutting out again. A total of 29. Total of 29 is a hit. Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage, okay. Uh, that does indeed connect and does at least do some damage. Uh, do I want to throw that? No, okay. Uh, okay, that's all your actions. Phelan. Okay. So we'll start by maintaining spell. Yep. So, uh, reflex save reflex again, please. Save again. Uh, 10 on the dice gives me a 22. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, and... 
Uh, we like fire, so let's do flame at her. Okay. For some amount to hit. For 21 to hit. 21 is definitely going to hit, yeah. Okay, and the flame of this level is. 2d4 plus. Nice focus. Minimum roll, six fire damage. Six fire damage. It still goes through, though. Um, absolutely affects them. Uh, that is that. Uh, okay. Um, Olorin's going to have a bit of a... Speed, speed, where is speed? Five. Okay. Okay. Uh, that would be all your actions, Nephi. It's your turn. Um. I. I'm going to reload and shoot it again. Okay. Because I don't want to get any nearer. <laughs> well. Twenty. It's going to miss. Yeah. I am then going to... I don't think I have any potion. Which is an issue. Um... What's the difference between an, an elixir of life minor and a healing potion letter? Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's a 1d6. And that one is... Oh, okay. I'm going to take... I assume it's one action to take? It is, yeah. Well, okay. mm, it's one action to draw it, so one action to effectively find it on your belt. So you'll be able to drink it at the start of next, unless you don't want to reload the weapon. No, I reloaded at the start so I can shoot. Yeah, so... Mm. So I'll, I'll grab it ready for this. Okay, okay. That means it's the creature's turn. Moz, you get an attack of opportunity as she reaches out and starts tearing a piece of flesh from the um, statue behind her. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, Moz, choppy time. Yeah, the 20. Twen 20 is a miss. Uh. She then devours this lump of flesh. And oh, as, she, as she does, you see the wounds that you have caused begin to stitch back together uh, yeah. on her body. In addition to that, she also seems to be exceptionally quick now and has the quickened trait for the rest of the turn as well. Uh, so, uh, not slowed, quickened. With that quickening, she is then going to cast a spell and reach out and try and touch you. Um, making a... I'll say no. Consent matters. Consent does matter, but... Um, I rolled a one. And so I completely miss you. Uh, there is no effect, and she wastes a spell. A rather important spell. Um, okay. Uh, and then for one final action, she'll cast shield on herself. Because that's what she needs to do. Uh, Inver. 
less each turn is what's happening. <laughs> um Right, there we go. So she got a rather good save last time around. That makes me grumpy. Mhm. Mm the undead. She, she looks like one of the cultists who were uh, ghouls. Yeah, and she ate flesh and got stronger. Mhm. Mm that said, um, you, you nobody's identified her, so you can't be hundred percent certain. Going to summon a lesser servitor. Okay. This, I'm going to have the no sword. Okay. You should be able to put that on the board yourself, I believe. Should be able to. Be able to. Let me hit cast because that's how people can the spells. Mm hmm. Ooh! There we go. Yep. So, what appears there is a little bird, um, which is a raven in this case, with the same sort of mask that I see the time to wear. This is one of the strike bombs. And that doesn't really have much of a much truck with undead critters rolling around either. So it is going there. Um So, from my understanding, they have um, four spells. They do. Um, no, it's going to use Haunting Melody, I think, which is BC 18 as a will. Yeah, it will be everybody. Oh, well, that's... Okay, no, you're right. If... Huh. Yeah, I don't want to take Moz and um, Oleron with me. <laughs> it's just going to die and be a distraction. It's fine. Okay. okay, so it can make an attack this turn. Oh, let me... <laughs> mm-hmm. Which has the ghost touch effect, although that's less relevant. Yeah. So 15 and 6 for 21. 21 is just a miss because of the shield spell. You see a kind of blue flash flare as it as it bounces off this magical uh, shell around this creature. Um, so you've cast a spell, you still have an action left, I believe. Uh, does the summon spell take all three? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, Moz, it's your turn then. Um, top of the round, we haven't charged in and tend to stab him in the face. Mm -hmm. He's going to take a moment to consider himself and see if he recognises what this particular picture is. Okie dokie. Uh, I will have a very quick look at your... Okay. Lord being the most it would indeed be the most useful. Uh, you got a reasonable roll from that. Uh, in fact, you've got that as well. So, um, yeah, you, you look at this creature, um, it's very clearly an undead, unsurprisingly. Uh, it does look like it's a ghoul, to be fair. Um, very similar, in fact, to the cultists that you've already, you've already seen. 
but there's just something about the way that the equipment that this thing is carrying the what the 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 outfit that this this one's wearing you think that it's probably a bit of a bigger deal than some of the other cultists that you've seen um you'd imagine that this is some sort of high priestess or something like that a, a cult leader potentially um, okay. But all the things you know about ghouls, paralysis, ghoul fever, um, they're immune to death effects, they're immune to diseases, they're immune to paralysis, you're pretty certain this thing has all of those features. I'm not aware of anything just initially striking as any kind of particular offensive. No, there's... there's um, the fact that it can cast spells is fairly offensive. Um, yeah. Fair. Um, as, as a bit of a, a free action on the back of that, he'll shout out, treat it like a ghoul, and then he'll go for a nice big high right, low left cut. Okay. That's a natural 20. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Three for a. Bone dust, bone's been good for damage. It's been consistent all fours. Yeah, okay. Two plus four for six makes twelve. Twelve points of damage, okay. And second, we'll keep that dice because that doesn't look good. Plus eight. That's a twelve plus eight, which doesn't. I believe a uh, No, a twenty would miss. That's me. Twenty would miss. That is you, okay. Phelan, it's your turn. Start of round three. Start of round three. Sustain the spell. Mm hmm. Let's see Basically if I. Basically, flick save. Please. Yeah. Uh, uh, only a five on the dice. Uh, that's going to give me a total of 17. Oh dear. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Have 11 points of Bernie Bernie. Please. Uh, okay, I will take those 11 points of burning myself. Yep, alright. Uh. Uh, we'll. Lick another produce flame because why yep. the heck? Why not? not? Or, yeah. or uh, twenty-seven to hit. Yeah, that'll do it. That, that'll do it. Or nine points of fire damage. Nine more points of fire damage. Uh, not looking healthy. Um, and Oleren is going to have a quick. <laughs> mooch around. around there. <laughs> yeah, mooch around there and and, 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 and and give a badgerly wink to Moz. <laughs> Neffy, it's your turn. I'll press them over. <laughs> <laughs> I take that potion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to use my bonus action. Yeah. Um, do I have to roll? No, I just roll what? Yeah, indeed. Be... 2d8 plus 5. 8 to 12 plus 5 is 17. 17, yep. Cool, and then I shoot it. Yep. Uh, well, no, because you gotta, you gotta load it first and then you can shoot it. Oh, god, yeah. I load and then. Mm -hmm. You load it first last turn. Yeah, but she shot second last turn as well, and then drew a potion because right, you have to draw okay. it to drink it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Nat twenty. You can have that. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll I'll take a nat twenty. It's still only two d six down. Oh well, d six double to damage. Is six points of damage. Six? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all your actions, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. 2d6 doubled. Uh, no, d6 doubled. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, my turn then. My turn. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an ability called Swift Leap. It allows me to move half my speed without triggering attacks of opportunity. <laughs> uh, that would still put me in range. Whee! Over to that. 
Um, I'm then going to cast a spell. Um, which spell do we want to cast? Oh, Hibble itself. <laughs> uh, it's going to do a two action harm on itself. That heals it, yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're doing it at level 3. Uh, so, I'm going to do... Six, nine... Twelve on the dice, plus an additional... Uh, I'm doing it at level 3, so eight, sixteen... 24. So that's 36 points of healing. Invert, it's your turn. Oh, she's a problem and a pain in the ass. Wait, you're not talking about Nephew, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh good, she's still in range. I mean, Disrupt Undead is looking like a pretty good plan. <laughs> On the other hand... Oh no, I get three attacks. Over three turns, fucking up. Let's do that instead. Range spell attack. Yeah, not really my strong point. Okay, because I don't usually do ranged attacks, what's my ranged attack? Uh, so, uh, it's. If you look at your spell book where it's got spell DC is 19, and then it's got the little dice with the plus 9 next to it, the plus 9 is your spell attack. Ah, cool. Oh, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to cast Fighting Words, which is one of my new spells. Mm hmm. Um, I'm going to do it once a day. So, you entwine magic with your voice causing your taunts and jibes to physically harm your enemies. You can attack with your words once when you finish casting the spell and repeat, repeat the attack once on each of your subsequent turns by taking a single action. After your third attack, the spell ends. So this okay. is two actions. When you attack, make a ranged spell attack roll against a creature within 30 feet. Yep. So, I've cast the spell. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to hero point that. For 18 plus 9, that's 27 to hit. Yep, that will hit. That will hit. So, PD6. Four. Yeah, not there it doesn't. 4 plus 1 for 5 points of damage. Okay. Uh, you keep me honest on the fact... Well, you keep yourself honest on the using an action to keep it going. Yep. So that's one action. Mm -hmm. Then Distracty Bird is going to go and dive bomb again. Yep. So moves over and attacks. Yep. It's the 60 foot elevation is a little bit obscene for one person when we've got some melee fights going on. Hmm. I tell you, the one thing I really like about that um, that biting words is that extra rounds thing is not a sustain ability, so you can use it with a sustained spell. Yes. So that was 17 plus 6 for 23 to hit this That time. does hit, yeah. So 1d6 negative damage plus 1d4 minus 1 piercing. Ah, come on, all in tray, idiot. Uh, 5 minus 1 is 4 in tray, please. Four. Um, some of which negative, oh, positive damage. Yeah. That makes it. It does not. It does not. Uh, but it will take the four points of damage quite happily. And that's that's everything. Moved, third attack. Yep, done. Okay. Moz. Do I, I need was to go to the I'd have dumped it over there so it Hang on, sorry. Two people talking over one another. Let's try again. Let's start with um, let's start with Kess. If I'm smart, I'm not 
there so that it would give planting to the other side. You right. can indeed do that now if that's what you prefer. Um, okay, Moz, now it's your turn. With the bird, with the bird over there, I don't have to be acrobatic, so that solves that problem. Um, I take two steps forward. Mhm. Mm and I stick with my nice reverse, and I go from a low right to high left with the halberd. Okay. Let's go. Nine plus thirteen. Not for for maths fail. 21? Yep. 21 is a hit. There's no shield. No okay. shield. And I'm assuming the no see actually gives you flanking as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's 5 plus 4 for 9. 9 points damage. Okay. We're going to stick with the theory of maintaining the damage. I'm going to be using exacting strike on this next one. Mm hmm. Fifteen plus eight or twenty-three. Twenty-three is a hit. Eight plus four. That is a six plus four for tap. Okay. Still up. I I got on my one. Well you moved, so So yeah, there's no third attack. There's no so, yeah, third attack. That. Balen. Okay. So, sustained spell, the flaming balls are going to scoot along the floor. Yep. <laughs> swerve past Moz's foot. <laughs> sit, sit, on, sit underneath his ghoul and burn merrily. Uh, day, please. Yeah, 15 on the dice. Uh, it's going to be a 27. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You never know. Yeah, you've you've hurt it once with the, with that. So okay, and um, then just bang another produce flame because that also seems to work reasonably well. Mm -hmm. Though not with a fifteen to hit. No, no, not so much. Not so much with that one. Um, Nephi, it's your turn, and I believe at the moment you can't see it. Oh, actually, hang on. No, I'm wrong because Olrin gets to do something. Yes. <laughs> well. Starts oh, plodding round. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just keep it on our toes. Okay, it is Nephi's turn now. Um reload. Mm-hmm. And shoot from there. Okay. Gonna give her a little bit of a benefit for cover, but yep. Yeah. Twenty-three. Twenty-three with the benefit that I was giving it for cover is going to hit. Uh, that is a two points of damage. Off a whole two points. A whole two points. So you've moved, you've reloaded, and you fired. Yeah. Okay, it's it's go again. I think that's two points of damage more than I did to it. <laughs> Every Hi. little really does help. <laughs> Can I get somewhere where Moz can't hit me? Yes. Does that have the range? No. <laughs> Don't believe it will from here. No. Okay. So, we'll go forwards then instead. Leaps over to there. Uh, and then casts a spell, which some of you probably know quite well. It's going to cast Sound Burst. Um, yeah. And it's going to cast it right there. Yeah. So, can I get a Fortitude save from Nephi, Phelan, and Inver, please? No. Fortitude. <laughs> 22. 27. 22. Nephi? 17. How much? 17. 17. Oh dear. Nephi, oh, uh, Phelan and Inver, you're only going to take half of this damage. Um, Nephi, 
you're going to take full damage and you are deafened for a round. Um, so, uh, that is, uh, the dice say 17 points of damage. Um, so, Nephi will take 17. Um, Inver and Phelan, you will take 8. Yep. That is that, and uh, Nephi's deafened. Okie dokie. Uh, Inva, it's your turn. Well, now I'm grouchy. <laughs> Why has she disappeared again? Oh, she's down there. <laughs> she's hiding round a corner. She, she keeps on jumping around. Well, I'm clearly going to just attack her again. Because yeah. more attempts to beat her. But we're six and nine for some speed, not it? Oh. No. You do have a hero point. I do, actually. Let's try and... Six and eleven for seventeen isn't really going to make much of a difference. It's not, I'm afraid it's not. But I can do it again because I have a. Oh no, once per round. No, I can't. Once per oh, round. Excellent. Okay. Well. I'm going to cast shield on me. Mm-hmm. And... That? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For 13 and 6 is 19. That is going to miss as well, I'm afraid. Okay, Moz. Cool. Um, you can keep running, but you're just gonna die tired. <laughs> and you'll set up a flanking run and attempt to run a three on the way in with Halbert. Mm-hmm. Ten plus thirteen for twenty-three. That is a hit. That's a 10 plus 4 for 14 damage. Ooh, a very nice, powerful swing, but she is still going. As well as he's charged in with the halberd and done that meaty strike, he's just going to carry on and rip it backwards. <laughs> Go on. Take an exacting strike. No, it was just a standard strike because it's a second blow. No point in brutish shove. No. Good. 7 plus 8 for 16. That's Nothing. a miss. That is a miss. Doing extra high on the way back out. Uh, Phelan, it is your turn. Okay. Scoop the ball of fire. <laughs> Basic reflex save, please. Yep, yep. 16 on the dice. Yeah, well, it's good. You, you never know, but yeah. She's alive, live and dead, this one. Okay. Um, flick a ball of juice flame. Mm hmm. 21 to hit. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a tight corner though, uh, but you can see, you can probably see more than enough of her. I'd say that's okay. Yeah, because I'm looking around the corner rather than yeah. hiding behind the corner. Yeah. Minimum damage though for six. Okay, she's still standing. And Olerin has a bit of a. Actually, no. Olerin is going to have a plod back over there. <laughs> Olerin knows that shenanigans <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. How racket she look? She looks real bad. Like, real bad. I stole this movie in Chronicles of Riddick. Olerin's going to get the kill. <laughs> <laughs> Nephi, it's he your turn. <laughs> Olerin, king of the necromongers. <laughs> I'm gonna... Step, Step up. Yeah. Uh... I need to reload, don't I? You do. Or did I reload at the last one? You move forward, you sh reloaded, you shot. No, you... you... Reload, then. And then shoot. Okay. Can't count. 22! 
<laughs> 22 is a hit. She drops to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely gone. And no more. I suggest um, we destroy the statue. <laughs> and what's left of the make sure. Okay. It's been an hour. It's been a, a long fight for you guys, that one. Actually going into about the fifth round for a change. Hmm. Do you want to know what's in here or should we leave it until the next one? Let's go so we can not talk about it before the next episode. <laughs> okay, let's, let's carry on. Well, the first thing then, as you search everything that's going on. She wasn't really carrying much, just that standard necklace round her, round her neck. But in addition to that, after you take a little bit of time, you notice that the stuff that she's got is magical. Mm-hmm. And with a bit of identification takes a little bit of time but actually Moz is the one that recognises it because it's quite closely a, a, aligned with your undead lore mm. because it's a staff of necromancy oh god um, very very similar in fact to Phelan's healing staff uh, what this does is it allows whoever's using it to build up charges with it each day and then cast spells out of it um, that are of a necromantic nature. Um, this includes Chill Touch, Grim Tendrils, Deafness, Gentle Repose and Ray of Enfeeblement. It also gives, a, also gives a plus two circumstance bonus to identifying magic which is of a necromantic type. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. In addition to that, it takes a little bit of time, but you smash down that um, statue. I believe that's uh, that's something that Nevi said that they wanted to do. That is pulled apart. Uh, you do realise uh, um, it that the actual thing, while it's exceptionally large and, and, and horrific in the fact that it's made up of multiple parts of multiple different creatures, including murlocs, uh, murlocs, morlocs, from what you can see. Um, but it's designed to look very similar to that wood golem that you saw, which was designed uh, to look very much like Belcora. Belcora. So, uh, yes. But in addition to that, and this is one thing that I'm definitely not going to do until the next episode, you find a secret door on Ooh. the eastern side of the room that leads into what appears to be a secure collection of books with a little bit of time looking through these not only do you find um, some simple books um, but this appears to have the real deal stuff in here there are blueprints for gauntlet itself which explains how the gauntlet can be made to function oh. you find a book called the whispering reeds which is a magic book which de uh, which de describes 77 supposed encounters with the outer goddess Nimbaloth and how each encounter leaves a physical or mental scar in addition you find Belcora's personal journal and finally you find a book which outlines how to use and create and awaken the teleportation circles that are hidden around the gauntlet. And with those bits of information, I think we'll leave it now. Till next time. Say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Okay. Um.
See you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.